Hey everybody out there, welcome to the show this week. This band from Philly is making some energetic, highly emotional tunes on their debut record. So thrilled to bring them to you and have them on the show. This is episode 136 of In It to Spin It with Beach Slang. So at the merch booth, I kind of went a little overboard, got a lot of stuff. Uh, these are the two EPs that came out, started garnering the band some attention. Glad to pick them up. Uh, on the left, we've got an orangey-red one. On the right, just black. These, these have been pressed multiple times now, really popular. Glad to finally own them. Great stuff on here, super solid. And of course, here's the debut record. Glad to pick it up in physical form. Nice white tour vinyl, only 500, so I'm guessing most of the later cities won't have a chance at this, but uh, apparently the most pre-ordered polyvinyl record of all time here. And there's also a book James has written, uh, sort of little meanderings and thoughts and stuff. It's half um, lyrics, half sort of just thoughts. It's put together really well, collage style. Picked it up too. I think it just really recently came out. And finally, there was a poster I just couldn't resist, uh, made by one of the members. Nice silk screen, two color poster out of 70. Nice little pickup. And uh, one of the members didn't happen to make it over the border, Ed, and they had to employ the help of Lithuania bass player and singer. You can see him here with his iPod plugged in, trying to learn the beach slang songs while they create the set list. Pretty impressive. Uh, still put on a hell of a show, even without their bass player. You couldn't really even tell. The guy did a hell of a job. Uh, the set list here I was able to grab. I know they played more than 10 songs, so this is just a partial. But uh, great night. Let's have a look at the interview. Hey everyone out there, we are here in Vancouver once again at the Cobalt with a band that coming out of Philly that has just released their debut record uh, earlier this week. Uh, it's rife with vulnerability, energy, and hope. This is Beach Slang. Say hi to everybody out there. Hello. Hey. Yeah, thanks for being here, guys. Uh, James, JP, Ruben, say hi to everyone. Ed is not there. Ed's it's, not present. It's a, such no. a shame. Yeah, he's, uh, know. he's here in spirit, man. Yeah. So uh, thanks for being here with us. It's uh, really nice to meet you guys. I've been loving the new record. I actually wore out my band camp stay. Uh, they made me pay after a while, hoping oh. to pick up the uh, physical. Did you, the physicals make it across the border? They did. They're with us. But yeah, we're okay, bring cool. them in. Yeah. We'll, we'll pick that up then. Um, yeah, so 2014, two EPs came out. Everyone's pumped for their the debut, which is now out in the form of uh, the things we do to find house out on polyvinyl uh, it's a pop punk record with a celebratory vibe throughout uh, each song sort of gives it sort of uh, uh, meaning in less than three minutes I think only one hits the three minute mark so uh, great quick uh, vibe on all these songs it's a pretty great record uh, I honestly believe it's something special I don't use that term very often, but yeah, I mean, when I hear it, it's, it's the vocals sweet, especially, Thanks, and man. the sentiment and the intimacy, really amazing. Oh, that's really sweet. So, just quickly sum up, how does it feel? I mean, I read in an interview, you guys were just three or four guys a year ago making music in a room, and now these EPs come out, this record comes out, and this sort of critical acclaim comes out, and how does it feel to be here right now well, with this record out? still four guys in a room making music. Yeah. You know? I mean that's how we see it. We're sort of really guided by just being humble, keeping yeah. our eyes on the you know, on the work. Yeah. And uh, 
but yeah, you know, it's exciting. Now we show up to places and there's a couple people there who want to want to sing along. You know, yeah. so that's yeah. really cool. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think that humbleness really comes along in your tiny desk NPR performance. Oh, thank. You. Yeah, that was equal parts humble and nervous. Yeah, you know, nervous energy. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna that. I was gonna <laughs> link you. that I was gonna link that later, but oh, I gotta sweet. link it here because check it out. If you really want to get to know these guys, it's kind of stripped down uh, lyrics and the sound. And it's acoustic, so the lyrics come through more. And it's really the bare bones of what this is about, and you represent it so well on that oh, performance. Very sweet. It's really nice. Um, talk about kind of what, when you guys were informing Beach Slang, um, what did you want the band to represent, sort of? Because I heard there was like a, you wanted an honesty to come through and a vulnerability, like I mentioned. Sure. sure. Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's a, a great summation of it. Yeah. I, I just like, just sort of like, look, you know, we've sort of been choked on auto-tuning and American idolization and those sort of things. It's just yeah. like, just wanted to get back to like, just honest rock and roll. It can be kind of a mess, it can be imperfect, and in that, it's just really human, you know? Yeah. And I think that's been lacking. And that's, it's nothing nothing different than sort of the records we grew up on. Okay. You know, just plugging guitars in, turning them up, and just like going. Right. I just wanted that. Just Turn wanted them to up that. to nine, I don't want it that's to it. be too loud type <laughs> nice. of thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, at its core, this is an urgent, youthful record. Drinking loud music are mentioned. Uh, there's a sense of hurt, but also uh, a hopeful quality too. Can you sort of touch on that aspect of the record and maybe how becoming a, a father for yourself, if I don't get too personal, has sort of influenced your writing and music? Yeah. Well, it's like, look, I think it's important to remember getting knocked down, right? But it's like, it does no good to, to stay there, so it's celebrating the, that you got back up part. Yeah. Like, I think that's important, and that's a thread that goes throughout, right? It's like, right, and you know, being a being a dad, right? You just start thinking bigger than yourself, yeah. you know. So it's like there's this urgency and hunger in me to sort of, sort of deliver on the promise I made to the kid when I had him, you know. It's okay. like I wanna, yeah, wanna make sure I do I do right by him. You know? <laughs> You've been in the Philly scene for a long time. Um, did you sort of let go of some stuff when you formed this new project? Because Pitchfork really, even halfway through reading the Pitchfork review, I thought instantly Japan Droids, which is a Vancouver band, and the embodiment of that sort of energetic, youthful, sort of celebratory vibe, once again. Uh, they let everything go. They didn't think there was going to be another record, but they just made that last one. Did you sort of feel that, and do you think that uh, sort of comparison is valid to the, the Japan Droid sort of last record celebration around? I think so. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're constantly living in that sort of moment, right? Because as we talk about honesty, it's like, we don't know how we'll feel when it's the next record, or yeah. even if the next record happens, right? Yeah. So it's like, we just want to sort of like tear out what's happening now and stick it on vinyl, you know? And then like, then we'll sort of see what else happens, but it's like, yeah, it's a, yeah, I just want it to be an honest reflection of where we are at the time okay. to make these things, you know? Cool. Um, and yeah. is there a certain song on the album that you're most proud of? Uh, everyone involved, like, yeah. Oh, that, I don't, I don't like you guys. Do you, I think do we're you picking have... favorite kids at this point, you know, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't feel, I feel I really know. good about the whole the whole record. Project. Yeah, the, I mean, I, it's ten songs. It's ju is it just over thirty minutes? And I mean, it's just under, under thirty. It's so just under, yeah. half hour of power. That's the way it. it was all like pieced <laughs> together too. It sort of felt like one cohesive piece of art. Which yeah. is kind of I think really important to us that it plays Definitely. through as like a solid piece. Yeah. So you guys are just enjoying playing everything on stage together. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. That's the the fun part. I read uh, that taking, recording some of these songs on the early takes was important. Why was that important to you guys? To yeah. capture an energy or...? Yeah, I mean, you know how it is. It's just like once you're hitting something the fifth, sixth, tenth, whatever time, it's going to lose some, some of that soul. Some you know, it just, yeah, yeah. It's just something just goes missing. Yeah. You know? so, um, and that, that's, a, that's an ideology that I think a lot of bands need to adhere 
or two more. Because I've only heard very few bands talk about the magic in these first couple takes. Where you guys are just all, there's a spark, right? There's not just repetition. Going For on. sure. And we're not trying to be technically precise. We're yeah. trying to like, it's supposed to feel right yeah. more so than sound right. Like, yeah. And I think that only happens in those first couple of takes. I think after that, then it just starts to become mechanical. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, okay. So that's what we see on this new record is the oh, first without, couple of takes. Without, okay. without a doubt, yeah. Um, let's get into new releases of 2015. We're in November now, so do you? Let's go right to left or start left to right. Anything? Uh, do you have a favorite release of uh, 2015? Man, I'm gonna blank on this because I, I wasn't prepared to think about it. But um, I should. Yeah. Off uh, the top, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, man. Hey, uh, uh, You're on the road a lot. That's all. Right. I, I got a lot on my Does mind. Does any, right anyone then? Anyone have a favorite release of 2015? I'm pretty excited about the new Lithuania record. Yeah, we're, it's cool that we get to tour with them because they're a band that uh, they've been around for a long time, but maybe a lot of people don't know about them. Yeah, and this record is sort of where people are beginning to turn Diving, their heads. Yeah, I think this record that they just made is flawless. It's perfect. It's okay. such a great record. That'd be a cool one to check out. Yeah, they're, they're uh, cool. here's one that you either know or you don't know. Let's go left to right. First show you ever saw. I don't know that oh. I remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you, I, I, you. I saw the Ramones as a first movie. show ever. Yeah, it was at this place in the oh, yeah, it's sort of like hall, like 500 cap hall show. Wow. It was like yeah, this this local band, the Original Sins, opened up and the Ramones headlined. Wow, that is easily yeah. the best answer. Yeah, yeah. and the, the only time, the only time ever. I got to see them was nice. my first show. Wow. How about yourself? Uh, well, my very first show was just a local rock show. I can't remember any of the bands that played it, but yeah, um, I, I think I went to quite a few of those, like a dozen of those, before I started going to bigger, bigger shows. Yeah, I was yeah. really young. I could, didn't have a car. I didn't have friends with a car, so it was okay. kind of what was locally available in Peoria, Illinois at the time. Okay, if you could see an artist in their prime, time travel, who would you see, alive or dead? Oh, uh, oh, I'd just go current selfish and say Pinhead Gunpowder. It's a band that was probably just fell right under my my purview. And like I said, I was I was young enough to not okay. be able to drive Pin, and go see them, but they were playing Pinhead around. Gunpowder. Yeah, it's okay. a band from East Bay, nice. California. How about yourself? Yep. Um, it'd probably be a two-way tie between when the replacements sort of first started yeah. doing the thing, and I, the Smiths. I'd like yeah. to know, cause I don't, okay. I'm not so sure that's ever going to happen. I, for the record, I've asked several bands out, and they've said the Ramones many times. Oh, see? So, you're very, like, very, very it, yeah. awesome answer. I would uh, like to see either the Nerves or probably the Ramones. <laughs> yeah. I would definitely love to see the Ramones. Cool, man. Okay, well, I think that's a good little chat out here in the rain. We won't keep you guys out here. This is uh, pretty ridiculous. It's pretty cold and rainy and unlit. But uh, I would honestly say, I mean, I think there's definitely something special going on this record. Don't miss it. Check it out. And uh, I think I'm way out of tune. Crank It Up Past 11 sort of embodies the spirit and uh, vibe going on this record. So I can't wait to see you guys live. And thanks so much thanks, for man. making Thank time for us. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thanks, dude. Cheers. Thanks. Right Sweet, guys. Thank you so much. Oh, no Thank you. Good? Yeah. Rock and roll. Nice. <laughs>